Hi, in uh, today's session, we will be discussing the uh, famous Renaissance artist, Peter Bruegel. Um, the subject of today's lecture is the process of viewing art. Uh, and why is that important? Um, we, in a literary uh, class, we often tend to think of uh, literary texts as cultural artifacts. So what, I, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that when we look at a text and when we think of reading a text critically, we try and understand that text as an outcome of a socio-historical time. And so we try and locate it socio-historically and then we try and understand the psychology behind the author who created the work of uh, writing and uh, we try and then try and locate the literary work in terms of the social background of the writer uh, and then what was going on around the world around that time uh, and which is which is why I suppose we can call a literary text a cultural artifact uh, I tend to think that it is possible to think of paintings also as cultural artifacts so what we're going to do today is try and demonstrate uh, the process of viewing a painting. Now, the subject for today's painting is Peter Bruegel, and because this is a short session, as I said, uh, we'll focus on two paintings. Um, for this brief session, we'll be discussing his uh, famous painting, uh, the name of uh, Wedding Dance. Now, there are a couple of things we need to remember when we, uh, before we try and critically appreciate Peter Bruegel, we need to look at um, <clears throat> what the subject of his paintings were, um, who did he paint. Um, and this is where he becomes interesting because um, when we often discuss the Renaissance uh, period, we, we, when we think of art produced, in the Renaissance period, we think of the aristocracy because uh, most of the artists were commissioned by people with money um, because art artists needed to be paid and therefore they, they would create a commissioned portrait. But what we notice in Peter Bruegel is um, that his subjects are far removed from wealth. Uh, he, his paintings are not about the church or the aristocrats. His paintings are about the poor, the peasants particularly. Uh, and when we look at his paintings, you'd start seeing a different dimension of the Renaissance. Uh, and what we'll be doing now is uh, focus on one painting and try and understand how Peter Bruegel transforms our understanding of the Renaissance through his paintings. Let's jump into it. When we first um, look at this uh, famous painting by Bruegel, uh, what we see is what the title informs us. Um, it's a scene from the wedding uh, and the title of the painting is called The Wedding Dance. And so therefore, what you see are people dancing. And that would mean that the occasion of the wedding has passed. The bride and the groom are not uh, really visible because they might have been a member of this crowd. So there isn't really a centering of these two subjects, the bride and the groom. The second thing is we don't see food. What we see are people having a good time. And these people are not uh, distinguished by what they are wearing. In fact, if there is anything, what is emphasized is the uh, commonness of what they are wearing. There is a lot of red, there is a lot of white, there is a lot of gray. And it's set in a forest um, because uh, it's understood that poor pheasants do not have the money to afford large wedding halls and therefore the scene of the festivity is close to nature now 
this painting therefore seems to tell a simple tale. Uh, we do not see any remarkable faces, but in order to understand the genius of Bruegel's work, we have to go a little closer to different sections of the canvas and have a closer look. So what we have is essentially a foreground here, and then there is a background, and then we see you know, perspective used, so people in the foreground appear as if they are bigger than people in the background, because as a viewer of art, you seem to be standing closer to these people, and the people in the background seem like they are distant and therefore not too clear. But in order to understand the genius of um, Bruegel, we need to have a closer look at the painting, and therefore this uh, image that I downloaded from Google allows me to zoom into it, and therefore we get a sense of what happens when we have a closer look. So the first scene that I would look at is this particular scene where we see people having a discussion, presumably. Uh, we see that these people are in dancing while the center of the painting seems to be, have focused on dancing. These people seem to be having a conversation. There is a serious conversation going on here between these two people, a man and a woman, particularly serious. They don't look festive. They don't look happy. On the other hand, we see young men here seem to be having a good time. They are looking at... Uh, these women possibly therefore there is courtship on the other hand you see possibly a cook who is unable to participate in the festivity and so you see her uh, longingly looking at what's going on and at the far end you see two people sharing a kiss uh, away from the crowd because probably they do not want to be discovered by the crowd here is a husband and wife sharing a small moment with their kid. And away from them is this solitary figure who is looking away. Away from the festivity, he is looking further off into a scene that is hardly visible to us. And then as we come closer, you see this peculiar face of a man who is having a great time. So he is unconcerned about social propriety. He is having a great time. And then as we come closer to the foreground, you see people having a great time. Uh, and this, this is me shrinking away from the painting. And on the other hand, when you go to this corner, you see people seated by a table and you know steeped in conversation uh, they're not really bothered by the dance uh, and here is a shy couple who haven't really joined the dance but you know they're smiling and they're probably trying to make up their mind whether they want to join the dance or not here are three men having a serious conversation two women having a serious conversation uh, but what's uh, interesting is as we go further to the right we see two you know, uh, a man and a woman sharing a kiss while in the midst of the festivities. So probably they are having a good time. And this can be contrasted with uh, this couple in the far end who seem to have shied away from the crowd while sharing a kiss. And closer to these couple, uh, they're making out is this shy man who is blushing at his cheeks and the nose and accompanied by a man who is getting drunk. He was both of them. This man seems to be shy and interested in participating in the dance, but somehow he can't. This man is unconcerned about the dance because he's having a good drink. And in the, this particular corner, we have the musicians who are responsible for the music, which is causing this great scene of festivity. Now, what's interesting about this painting is that um, in the first glance, it would seem that Bruegel has focused on the dance. But what's interesting is that he has uh, created uh, individuals in every aspect of the canvas. And each individual is characterized by specific emotions. So in the process, what Bruegel seems to have done here is uh, give character and personality to the most common, commonest of folks as if each uh, pheasant has a story, uh, is worthy of being a subject uh, in this grand Renaissance painting. 
And that sends an interesting message to people like us in the 20th century who view, you know, Bruegel's paintings in contrast to, for instance, a painting by Leonardo da Vinci, uh, whose focus is mostly religious or aristocracy. So what Bruegel seems to say is that the pheasants too are important subjects and they too deserve attention and they too are interesting characters with their own idiosyncrasies and he tries to in the process democratize the process of portraying art and the subject. Now this particular process of viewing Bruegel like this is also an interesting phenomenon because and that's going to constitute the second lecture about technology and art. As I said this is a painting that I downloaded from Google and what it proves to us is that I do not have to go to a museum of art history to have a look at Bruegel's painting and analyze it and so on and so forth. Right? Uh, I'm able to look at an image of that particular painting in high resolution facilitated by technology and then I'm trying and I'm able to understand it as a cultural artifact of the Renaissance but also as a window to Dutch pheasantry uh, of the times. Uh, what it proves to us is that technology has a way of opening up interesting windows of introspection and analysis which can be very crucial in the process of democratizing uh, art and uh, the viewing of art and so on and so forth. So in the first, and I'll show this to you in the second lecture where I'll say how you know, a technological giant like Google transforms our experience of viewing a painting. And for that purpose, I will be focusing on another painting by Peter Bruegel, uh, the famous The Harvesters. Uh, this is all for now. Thank you.